talk a little bit about the art of site selection. This is usually one of those places where we have a lot of people call our office asking site selection questions. And you got to understand the art of site selection before you understand the science of site selection. Most people want to deal with demographics, psychographics, market shares, traffic counts. That's all science. That's all the science of site selection. But the art of site selection is what business are we in and what are we trying to provide? The reality is we're in the business of providing a meal. Now, I understand the restaurant business has a lot more than that. It's got hospitality, quality, service, quality, accuracy. But we're trying to provide a meal when you cut it right down to the nub. And if you think about it, we're not a lot different than animals out in the wild on how we determine where and when we're going to eat. Well, so when I, when I say that, people, well, what do you mean? Well, mammals have a certain way of dining. So I'm going to use an example. Whether you're a deer hunter or not, you will get these analogies. And whether you're a fisherman or not, you will get these analogies. Because again, they will make sense based on the fact that you have an animal that needs to eat. Deer eat in the mornings and in the evenings. Fish, for the most part, eat in the mornings and they eat in the evenings. Lions, mornings, evenings. You go through the animal kingdom, they eat mostly mornings, evenings. Humans, we eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, late night, snacks in between. Well, so when you're looking at a site, keeping in mind what day part is important to you would have an impact on the site you're wanting to select. Also, I think it's important that you think about the traffic patterns as it pertains to a site. Let me give you an example. With a deer, a deer determines an area that it's going to bed where it sleeps. And that area, they bed pretty consistently. They go back to that same area, a deer's home range where they live. They also have an area that they're going to eat, and they have an area that they're going to chase women. A buck deer will chase women, usually in a given area. A buck deer will eat, usually in the same given area. They will drink in a given area. And what a deer will do is it will travel from where it beds to where it drinks, from where it drinks to where it eats, from where it eats to where it chases women, from where it chases women to where it beds. And they will do that over and over and over and over again. They might do it differently next time. The next time, they might go from where they bed to where they chase women. And then they might go from where they chase women to where they eat, and where they eat, where they drink, where they drink, where they bed. And they'll do it over and over again. And in some instances, they will go from where they bed to where they eat. But those paths are very tight. You literally, as a deer hunter, can if you can figure out where a deer beds and where a deer eats, drinks, and chases women, you will be able to find the deer. There's no way around it. Okay? Fish. Interesting. Fish are about the same way. Whether a fish is in a lake or a fish is in a river, for the most part, we can sit here and plot the point where a fish beds. And let's say this is a river. Or let's say we have a pond. We can usually find where a fish will bed where a fish will then go out to eat. I'm not really sure if a fish drinks. They're in the water. But we can figure out where they bed, where they eat, 
and where, how they keep moving back and forth. If it's in a river, we can figure out where they bed, where they eat, how they go back and forth. Okay, well, how does this pertain to a restaurant? Well, so using that same theory, if I can figure out where humans bed, where their homes are, say this is their homes, and this is ho more homes, and this is more homes, and this is more homes. And I can figure out where they eat, drink, and chase women. I'm going to be able to dial in where I should build a restaurant. Most people don't take the time to look at a restaurant from the aerial view. Prior to selecting a site, when you've determined what marketplace you're going to do business in, what I implore you to do is go get maps of the area from an aerial view so that you're looking down on the area from high above and mark out, however you want to do it, with either letters or color codes, mark out where the homes are. Mark out where the businesses are. Here's a business, a bunch of businesses, here's a bunch of businesses, here's a bunch of businesses. You're going to see where the roads are. Mark out where all the restaurants are. Not just restaurants that do the business you do or want to do, but all the restaurants. And once I figure out where the restaurants are, interestingly enough, where do humans chase women? Interestingly enough, in restaurants and in businesses. Where do they go to eat? They go to eat where the pile of restaurants are, for the most part. Where can I be competitive? I can either build the restaurants where the other restaurants are, or I can build the restaurants on the roads that are going between. If I see any group of roads that are going between, I can build restaurants here, I can build restaurants here, I can build restaurants here, because that's the traffic pattern. Here's what happens too often. People don't look at it from an aerial view, and they build them between two groups of homes. There's a group of homes there and a group of homes there. No business is there, and they put the restaurant there, and then wonder why it's not successful. Well, because what that is, is you're not on a traffic pattern between where the human beings, the mammals, bed, work, chase women. You're not on the traffic pattern of it, and therefore you don't get to the